Hello. I think that the beginning of that was cut off. I didn't have the mic set quite yet. But hello, Andrew. Hi. Uh, <sighs> been a rough day, huh? It's been a rough day, but let's 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 pep ourselves up with some 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 video games. Yeah. And just because that last paragraph was very short, the reason we're not talking is um, somebody might come into the episode, you know, late and catch it and think, oh, God, there was no warning that this was going to be discussed. And yeah. just for our own mental health. like Yeah, wanna... that and, like, the, the just, just, like, uh, yeah, there's so much to say, so much is coming out that, honestly, anything we're going to say is is not going to be accurate probably by tomorrow, so there's not not a lot that we can really discuss with an informed opinion. Yeah. I will say I'm very angry mm -hmm. that... Yeah. One of the fucking accounts that was doing the most is that... Exposed wrestling, and it seems to have been taken down. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so that kind of has me upset. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see things as they unfold. But like we said, we're not really gonna discuss it, aside from a, some quick yeah. notes at the beginning here. Otherwise, how has your day been? Uh, honestly, just that, like, it's been rough, so, um, on the plus side, tomorrow my isomalt comes in. Oh. So I can make sugar-free candy. Ooh. And I have, like, a tincture that would be good for candy. Oh. So I was thinking I might make a small batch of hard candies and bring you guys some. Yeah, we definitely would be interested in trying them. I, mean, I don't know how flavorful they'll be, but, you know, they'll be good for prolonging flavors. Certainly, certainly. Yeah. Raspberry flavor tincture, that is. Totally. Yes. Theoretically, I could add like actual extracts I've made, like lemon or raspberry or mint. Now, do you and actually you know use, do natural raspberry or do you do the artificial? Oh, I make my own extracts. Okay, good, because uh, I'm with, not uh, a fan of, of, of artificial raspberry. Yeah, no, this is made with real raspberries in alcohol, which is just how you make extracts. That little surprise for all you tinctures and extracts are just made by soaking shit in alcohol for months. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's why extracts effectively are just, um, just alcohol with things suspended in it. Hence why your vanilla extract that you bake with that smells so good is, a uh, tastes like evil, because it's just pretty much... Chemical. The yeah, the cheapest chemical alcohol. But yeah, the yes. reason I don't care for raspberry, uh, artificial raspberry, is not exactly the taste, but where it comes from. Do you know where it comes from, Andrew? Uh, bug shit, or bug ass. No, that's actually, the, the bug is, uh, red velvet, like, stuff. That stuff is a Man, ground I beetle cochineal carapace. Cochineal is, I know cochineal is for color. Mm -hmm. The, um, for raspberry, it's actually, uh, a chemical that comes from a gland from the anus of a beaver. So if you have artificial raspberry, you're eating beaver ass. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who hasn't eaten a little beaver and eaten a little ass at some point? All I'm saying is I signed up for berry. I didn't sign up for that. I mean... Once you know, you yeah, yeah, some beaver ass, right? Yeah. I think my favorite beaver story is um, the Jeff Foxworthy beaver story. I don't think I remember that one. Uh, he likes meeting fans and meeting people. Right. And 
when he hears like pretty much the same jokes from people all the time. Oh, sure. And so, one came, uh, some fans came up to him one time at a grocery store of all places and were like, we figured if we ever had the chance to meet you, we figure you've heard every redneck thing, but we had to tell you the story about the time her brother got his nipple bitten off by a beaver. Oh. And Jeff Foxworthy goes, you have my attention. Yeah, what? <laughs> because what's... how do you walk away from a story like that? What happened there? And, uh, apparently it was like Thanksgiving Day. Her brother was driving along with a friend somewhere. Um, and, uh, they hit a beaver on the side of the road. No. Or hit a beaver and knocked it to the side of the road. So they're like. Although I'm gonna say that this beaver was probably at least conscious considering what we already know about this story. So they get out and decide they're gonna get a taxidermy. And so they pick it up and the brother goes, Look at it! It ain't cut up or bloody or nothing! And according to Jeff Foxworthy, apparently, nothing is the word that breaks a coma for a beaver because it immediately whipped around and bit his nipple off. He, off. Bit it off. Did not bite it. Bit it off. That is a whole new level of pain. And Jeff Foxworthy's standing there in a grocery store be, being told this story and he's like, the only response I had was... I bet that's the first time the newspaper headline could include the words nipple and beaver and nobody was offended. <laughs> uh. yeah. See, the thing is, when you say that, I immediately think, like, I know it was probably, like, a gouge, but I immediately think of, like, what, uh, what happened to, uh, why is my brain not giving, Mick Foley's ear. Yeah, getting pushed off his head. Yeah, just like not clean. ripped off, not you know pushed off his head. Well, WWE has fired one of the people uh, accused. Good on him. Uh, I didn't know they're he doing was something accused. right. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people at NXT UK were accused, and they're speaking out. Hmm. Um, uh, Jimmy Havoc's in, you know, fucking, uh, rehab, <sighs> that's the right thing to do, go to rehab. Sure. Um, I don't know that I'm happy or anything with AEW's response necessarily of we'll see afterwards like if he's going to rehab it's clearly obvious that the rumor or the like accusations are true right and we have two ver accounts you know confirming it that's true and well I mean if they said they're re-examining it my thought is that considering how often he performs it's likely problems with the contract where they don't really have um they don't really have the freedom to just remove him without it turning into a legal problem so they're probably figuring out how they can release him from his contract with as little uh like kerfuffle about it i'm wondering if it's more like we have this talent we've worked with very closely that we you know are friends with and you know uh it looks bad to release somebody in the middle of a fucking pandemic yeah that too plus like they really just started like uh this uh pushing the super bad squad so they yeah. probably had plans for him and kip yeah and obviously he will not be on tv during rehab no but the accusations I saw were bad, so... Yeah, but really, really they, they, they were really bad, but they also definitely, um, at least with what I saw, was uh, definitely seemed like 
like mental instability that definitely yeah. definitely should be looked into. Yeah, and that doesn't at all excuse what he did. I think no. he should be fired. I, like it's why I walked away from working at Modern Rogue and haven't pitched an article anywhere since. Um. Yeah, you were around at that time, you know the story, so... Yeah. Yeah. I... think that's... <sighs> anyway. Yeah. I... I think that the right thing to do would be to release him. For now. Yeah. And... You know, if you want to do something nice for him pay for the rehab but i'm just stay. i'm i'm nervous about it because considering considering how they've handled um like it hasn't necessarily been as atrocious but like considering the, the perce my perceived um the, the way that i perceive they treat their female talent yeah. While not bad, it definitely is an afterthought, and I, I'm i nervous, because this could really cement whether or not they are actually, like, good to their female talent or not, and, like, just are pro-woman in general. Yeah. And uh, Justin Roberts gone. Like, no, like, fire. Yeah. I believe in redemption, but I don't believe that he should be... No, 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 no. Well, allowed to, like, keep working there. Jimmy Havoc has potential for redemption. Yeah. Not with, you know, because what it looked like with him was a lot of mental illness and lashing out, not excusing it, not at all, but, like, you could see the root of that, whereas with Justin Roberts, that was a person making a decision. Yes. And An adult was, person uh, making a decision that affected and, a child, so... Yeah, so... No, Justin, fired. Jimmy, rehab, fired, and then see how he handles, you know... Yeah, which, I mean, that out. would not be the first time that a wrestler has gone through, like, a lot of emotional instability due to the, the like, every aspect of their work being very grueling on their body and mind, um, yeah. being in the public eye... Uh, be just like gen like the general um environment of it. Like AEW has made steps in the right direction towards making it a better environment, but it's still it's it's not always been a very good place to, to like just live your life on a regular basis. Yes, please. Fire Justin. Like, that one's the most concrete one I've seen. Like, mm -hmm. so, anyway, how's Banjo Tooie going? It looks like you just keep running around the same room doing the same thing three times over, over, over. Oh my god, that's the, that's the thing about this point in the game. These last, like, four or so worlds are just, like... They're a mess to navigate. They're really difficult to, like, tell where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do. And even when you know what you're supposed to do, like, running, remembering where everything is, is such a pain, so... It, this doesn't look like good level design. Like, it's... The mechanics look okay, but the level design looks very... I don't know if I'd say it's, like, bad level design necessarily, but it's definitely more organic level design where it's less it's designed to more feel like an actual place than it is designed to be easily uh, easy to navigate which going back and forth i don't know i it's it's strong like narrative design effectively but kind of weak like actual um utilitarian design I, I decided I was going to play Final Fantasy VII. I got it in my game Fly Q and all that. Nice. The, the remake. Yeah, yeah. And I started playing it, and it's just one of those things where if you hype up anything to me at all, I can't enjoy it. Like, it immediately... Like, I want to. 
like I'm excited for it, and I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to check out this thing out. Everybody says it's great. Then it isn't. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, Corey seemed to be pretty, pretty happy with it, and he's like one of the biggest Final Fantasy fans I've ever seen. As far as Seven goes, like that's one of his favorite games. And he, he was, uh, on one hand, he was really satisfied, and on the other hand, like, they they added a lot, and they really fleshed things out, because that first game um, only goes through uh, Midgar. Like, it, do, it you do not leave the city in that first game. Uh, one over two asks, is this not optional stuff at this point, referring to the stuff you're doing now in the game? Not quite yet. I have... I have 48 jiggies and I need 55 to unlock the final boss, so I'm just trying to get those last seven, and then I'll decide if I want to, um, if I want to try and get all the 100% stuff, but maybe not, so, considering how much trouble I'm having remembering most of this. I might just get, like, open up a walkthrough at that yeah. point. But yeah, like, if you hype something up to me, I, I, kind of, like, I don't like Doctor Who, I don't like... Uh, Seinfeld, I hate Friends, um, you know, stuff like that. Right. And so I was like, I know everyone is going to hype this game. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to play it and see if it's any good on my own. Yep. And it's just, like, I got to the point where Cloud and Tifa go to, like, do something with water filters. Like, really early in the game, and I'm like, I'm done. Right. I'm done. Like, this is such a slow fucking game. Interspersed by, like, a few quick battles, and then it's back to being a slow fucking game. Yeah. And. <sighs> it's one thing to make a game that is slow for a pacing reason, and it, like, fits the game itself. Right. But if there's, like, a sense of urgency in a game, and it's still a slow fucking game... Yeah, that's, that's the thing, is if it breaks the, the narrative... Yeah, where and for it, me, Final Fantasy VII did that. And for me, um... Shenmue oh, three really oh. does it. Right, you... I mean, you're a huge Shenmue fan. And I, I've only heard you talk about that one briefly, which gives me the impression that you really did not like it. I fucking hate Shenmue 3. Um, it is the worst. Like, it's... For a long time, all we had was 1 and 2. Yeah. And I was like, okay, but we know that it was planned to be a trilogy, so but you would finish it with 3. Mm -hmm. So I was like, alright, I'll play 3. And finish the story. And I was one of those on day one of the Kickstarter who helped fund it. Um, it broke records on Kickstarter. Yeah. And yeah. I have a theory of what happened after that. Hmm. I theorized that Sony saw how large the demand was for this game and said, hold on now. If it's this popular, then I, we should make a second game out of this. We, we can't just blow our wad on one title. So the third game, which it was always intended to be a trilogy, is suddenly not the end of the story. Well, okay, it was hold originally on, a on. Sega series though, right? Like it was Dreamcast. Yeah, and it's still, yeah, it was yeah. Sega uh, Dreamcast, and then it was Sega on the Xbox, hmm. and then went to the PlayStation 4, and it sucked. Mm. Like, you could tell it was meant to be the third and final story, right. but they had to make a full game out of it and, like, stop it at the halfway point of the game. That's always the, frustrating. Like, you could tell that it was meant to be the halfway point, because the first three quarters of that fucking game, you're stuck in this little remote mountain village doing nothing. You are wasting time. Just, like, oh, you have to earn a little bit of money, so chop wood. Oh, you have to do this, so 
uh, fucking play. It's just bad, and it's clearly artificially uh, lengthened in uh, time. Right. So that what was clearly meant to be the midway point is now the ending point, and they stretch just like what was clearly meant to be a tutorial to be three quarters of the fucking game. Yeah, that's that's and really frustrating. It was god awful. Like it was, and somebody said uh, on Twitter the other day that what Shenmue Three perfectly uh, recreates. Let me see if I can find the notification, the, t uh, the tweet, because it's it's a winner. Um, they fucking nail it. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, that's not quite how the FF Seven remake fits. Like, it does. It definitely. Um, you can tell that. Uh, they they're a little bit smoother about it, where they um, like they they fleshed out the world a great deal more. So like, there's a lot more to do in the world of Midgar, and then um, when they actually get to the point where you leave Midgar, they do make it feel like much more of a conclusion uh, to that specific game, while still having the tied bow leading off to the next next bit of the game. The, the tweet was something to the effect of what they uh, really pull off well is the feeling of or it shows just how boring revenge can be and the mundanity of it. Right. And uh, let me see. No. Wait. How much fucking time it takes, blah blah blah. Like, it was just a bad. Like, it's so. If you've played the first two. Right. There's and the I, I briefly played the first one. Yeah, and we played it together. Yeah, I. I'll, I'll say this now, though, before we get too much deeper into the conversation. I don't really see the difference between what you described 3 as, and what my experience with 1 was, at, like, Shenmue um, 1, it, it... So, with Shenmue 1, mm -hmm. uh, it might be because I know the game so well that I could move through it quickly. Right. And so it stays fast-paced. But... I played it as a kid, even, and... Like, yeah, you're... The whole plot of the first game is your dad was murdered yep. in front of you. You want to get to the guy who did it, so you spend the entire game um, trying to find the killer or to learn about who it is. And you're I running around. That. I thought you knew who the killer was. You see him, but you don't know who he is. Like You don't know why he killed your dad. You just know that he killed your dad and took something out of your yard. Um, your dad told you none of this stuff before he died. Before he died. So, you've so it's got more to like, find... who is he in relation to you guys? Like, you and yeah. your dad. What the fuck? Yeah. So, you don't even, like, know the guy's name. I don't think. You might know his name, but, like, you don't know who he is, why he killed your dad, anything like that. So, there's, like,. In the first game, you do detective work in your immediate neighborhood, you uh, find out who that is, you decide, alright, well, sailors are involved, because it's a Chinese mafia thing, so you gotta find some sailors, you go to bars and get in fights, you go to tattoo parlors and get in fights, you, uh, you're constantly doing it. Right. So, like, what you played was, like, the first tenth of the game, like, the first hour, really. Really? Yeah. Like, that game is packed with stuff. And you barely scratch the surface of what that game is, because you were, like, on day two or three of the investigation. Now, I if just... I'm playing, it's if not... I'm playing, mm -hmm. I can get it in less than a week. But mm. that's me. Because I know that game inside now. That's the thing is, it's it's 
It's, it's just not the style of game that I can handle because anything that has a ticking clock like that where things are actually working on their own schedules, impressive. I can totally understand why people would enjoy that and love digging into that. But for me, like, I have OCD, so I, like, if I feel like I'm missing anything, it's just constantly, like, triggering anxiety not, for me. So, that, it, it's not designed that way. So, like, if you don't do something by day four, you're not going to miss out on something. Hmm. Um, like, the story progresses the same. You just have to find the next piece of the story. So, like, it, the only time thing involved is if you don't find the information you need by a certain date on the calendar right then you get killed like then you get an automatic game over hmm. um so I'm like you start the game in December right and the game can be played until April 15th so you start on like December I think 17th or 18th or something like that and you can play until April 15th in game and if you wait that long then Londi shows up and kills you to steal the other flag hmm right so that's the only timer you got on you but like nothing else is uh time dependent like you can miss something that day but when you go back the next day it'll be there Okay. Like, um, if you don't get to, like, if you're trying to speed run it, you could finish the story in an in-game week and a half or so. That, yeah, I definitely get that Whereas, vibe. if you were to play it, you could finish it in an in-game month. I've not seen too many people, like, I've seen plenty of people get to Christmas. I've never seen anybody make it to New Year's. Hmm. Um, so... It's not like the timer is working against you. Um, right. You might, like, if you do Christmas and you just go straight from home to work and then back home without doing anything, mm -hmm. the most you'd miss out on is Santa. Uh, that's about it. Like, that's it. So, you could, you could play it and not miss anything. Um, right. The second game, same style. Third game, same style. But with the second game, it irritated me because it was a lot harder. Hmm. There was, um, like, there's always a tough fight at some point in the games. Right. But the second one had these three extremely tough no. fights, and they made it harder by making the money dependent. So you were, it was, uh, gambling that you were doing. Right. So if you, I'm going to think of how to phrase this. You had to make a certain amount of money to begin with. And then bet that money that you would win. Then, if you lost, you had to go get that money back. And it was not an insignificant amount of money. Mm. And making money in the Shenmue games is not impossible. It is just grinding. It yeah, is it's like it real, is like, real world uh, it's a, money making, yeah. basically. It's like level grinding, but money. Um, in the first game, you drove a forklift. In the second game, you did pretty much the same job, but you did it by hand with another guy, so you had to like time it by what he tells you. Mm. So you didn't just pick up a box and move forward. It was Left, right, left, left, forward, left. And if you messed up, you drop it, you know, chastise you like, come on, like, oh, shut up, Doolin. Um, so it was kind of fucking infuriating doing that because you would fucking not make a lot of money. Yeah, right. so there, you could bet on things to make money, you could gamble, but uh, it was not fun. So, with 
Chevy One, you made money by driving a forklift, but you didn't really too often need money. Like, you could use money to buy things like new attacks in the form of scrolls telling you how to do an attack, but you didn't need to. Um, with two, you had to, and it was not an insignificant amount of money to fight those battles so that you could progress in the story. Right. And if you lost, you had to start, you know, over financially and get that money back again. Mm. And it was just not worth the effort. Like, I put that game down for like six months the what? first time I played it and walked away. I actually loaned it to Corey first, and then came back to it like, alright, let me try this again, and I nailed it the first try on all three fights. I was like, fuck you. Um, the PS4 version's a little bit easier, I think. I didn't, I, I didn't have as many rage moments playing the PS4 port of Shenmue 2. Right. Um, three, however. Mind-numbing. Boring. Like, very boring. Extremely boring. Hmm. I feel like I spent five real-world days trying to get past one point in the game. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I'm not talking like I, I couldn't beat it. I mean, like, you just had to earn money for something or other oh no and then uh, <laughs> I, I, I i yeah i have zero tolerance for grind so yeah it was just mental grind emotional grind it's the worst in the trilogy and it's because they fucking had clearly had to pat it out that's always the case with that like, that specific move is used so often by different uh, publishers for movies and games, and it never works. It always just makes for a much, much worse product. And it's always, like, maligned by critics and just casual players because it's, it just, it's fucking dull. It's boring. Why would I want to play part of a game so that you guys can get two $60 price tags when I'd rather play the full fucking game? And that's, I feel like that's exactly what people's fear with the uh, FF7 remake was, because once they heard, like, oh, it's going to be multiple games, it's like, ooh, that's, that's rough. I don't know. I don't know if that's actually going to be warranted, but, like, with how much shit they added, it's like, yeah, I can see why they made that decision. They added so much. And some of it is just mini games and stuff, but other stuff is, like, just genuinely fleshing out the, um... The like the the world, the characters. There weren't the even like mini games that were worth doing in that part of Shenmue Three. Like there was gambling, and that was it. Mm. At least with Shenmue One, there was like Space Harrier and oh like, yeah, fun... just full on like classic Sega arcade games. Yeah, and in Two there was you know it was gambling, but they were at least fun gambling. Mm. <sighs> I feel like I'm forgetting stuff about Shenmue 2 that would prove me wrong here, but like, Shenmue 1 was just fucking god awful. Or no, uh, Shenmue 3 was just fucking god awful. <laughs> a bit One... of a Freudian slip there. Nah, I'm just tired. Yeah. <laughs> like, goddamn. <clears throat> um, so, like, I get to play Final Fantasy 7, and I know it doesn't fucking, like, do the whole game. Yeah. And I get to the point where you get an apartment. I'm like, I am done. Like, fuck this. Yeah. Like, I... There was something about that and then meeting the landlady that seemed to be voiced by Phyllis Diller. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I... No. I, I'm done. I already have so little patience for most JRPGs, so the one thing that makes me kind of want to play the FF7 remake is just that the battle system looks more fun. It looks more like Kingdom Hearts than the the standard turn-based, menu-based RPG. Because I can I can pretty much tolerate like 
uh, the Mario and Luigi series, Paper Mario, and Pokemon for that. And even those have had installments where I'm like, this is just tedium. Yeah, it, I love Paper Mario. Oh, so, totally. How do you feel about Origami King? I pre-ordered it. It's waiting on my Switch for my birthday. Nice. It looks... Because it comes out on my birthday. Ooh, nice. That's always nice when that happens. That happened with the Switch for me. Yeah. It came out on my birthday in 2017. Did a, did, so, it was really interesting because we did the uh, Walmart midnight release for it. So while we were waiting in line, as it turns out, one of the other people waiting in line, it was his birthday too. So his mom bought like cupcakes for everybody. Aww. It was sweet. It was a really fun uh, time. It was just everybody hanging out, chilling. Like it was a pretty big line because, as Corey points out, most of the dudes around here are missile techs for the Navy, aka fucking nerds. So it was a ton of different people, and it was just a, a fun time, chilling out at the back of the Walmart in the fucking like returns area. When um, so I have a terrible uh, history with pre-ordered games. Hmm. I'm just gonna list them and let this stand and speak for itself. Oh boy. Green Lantern for the PS3. Ooh. Um, Shenmue 3. Eh, yeah, yeah. Um, Agents of Mayhem. Mm, I, I think exactly. I've vaguely heard of that. <laughs> Exactly. It was a game played or made by the people who did Saints Row. It even oh. featured one of the characters from Saints Row. Right. So you're like, oh, well, this will be good. It wasn't bad. Like, I wouldn't so go so far as to say it sucked. <laughs> but I wouldn't say it was good. Yeah. Um, it was. Eh, like. Uh, let's see, what else have I pre-ordered? Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yeah. Um, South Park Fractured But Whole, which, good game, shitty people, won't be supporting it going forward. Um, yeah. God, there were some others that, just like, you, if you heard the full list of games that I've pre-ordered, you'd be like, please don't pre-order games I want to play. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm Kingdom been, like, Hearts 3. Yeah. That uh, was another pre-order. That that one is just so goddamn bad. I still haven't finished it. I'm literally like right at the right before the ending, and every time I set set it up and like try and play it again, I just get stuck on that last gummy ship trip to the final area and I'm like, fuck this game. Do you know what got me? Hmm. I was in Pirates of the Caribbean world. Yeah. Before I learned that you could upgrade your Keyblade at the Moogle shop. Yeah, that's when you told me to do it. I was at the same spot. <laughs> and I only found out because of the fucking crabs. I was like, <sighs> wait, I went back to the Moogle shop and I was like, yeah, I haven't gone here in like forever. I wonder, wonder what interesting items I could have that could have been helping me this whole time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I look at the thing for Keyblades, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, and once you do it, it's like, oh, now everything is just... A goddamn breeze. It's too easy. I think that's the, the main that my that main problem with that is, like, on one hand, I I enjoy the fact the that it's like... without it. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, so often in games like that, like a Metroid or whatever, it's like, they have to come up with some stupid fucking reason for why you can't just have all of your abilities from last game starting out in the sequel... And in that one, they were just like, no, nah, you're just exactly as powerful as you were at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2. Like, the crazy shit you were doing jumping off of fucking skyscrapers. You can just do that. And it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then I actually started playing, and I'm like, oh, that's why they do that in the other games. Because this is boring now. <laughs> For me, it was... Um, infuriatingly slow. Like, I... Struggled with that game. It's so it. They Up make it look point. like it's fast paced, but yeah, it's so slow. And I didn't like the thing that like I tried to replay it the other day. Like, you know, now that I know about that, maybe, 
maybe it's not so bad. Maybe, now that I know about the yeah. Keyblade, it's actually okay. No! It's really not. Um, you don't care. Like, I went in, I did not care about anything that was happening. Yeah. And so, I got to the point where you're supposed to help uh, Remy find ingredients when you first meet Uncle yeah, Scrooge. So much the... of that shit to deal with. Yeah, and like... I don't know if you remember the thing with Hercules' level, where um, it was a city on fire and you had to rescue everybody, and there was a lot of, like, riding around on Goofy's shield amongst yeah. the flaming buildings, and, like, running up walls and leaping off the building, like, and it never felt natural. Like, it never no, felt like... No, like, it was an interesting idea, but, like, it always felt so stuttered and, like, un the, the, there was no momentum to it. Just be like, here we go, and then you stop, and it's like, I, it was like when you go rollerblading or whatever at a roller rink, and then you have to like, when you get off of the rollerblading, it's like, whoa, whoa oh, it's, it's a, huh, I can't slide anymore. For me, it was there was a point the first time you do the sliding on the shield thing, mm -hmm. where you have to go and um, you don't realize there's a forked path you have to take the correct path of that. Yeah, it took me a couple times so to notice. Because you're moving so fast. So I went past the correct path like eight times. I'm like, am I going the wrong way? Because I'm right back where I started. And then you finally, like, think, all right, fuck it. And notice, oh, there's another path. Okay. And, like, it, it was a weird choice to completely depart from what we were used to with the Hercules levels. Oh no, this shit. Um, this is basically the dynamite again, but like, it's so much less time and you actually do have to aim for them, which is the way this shit aims. Alright. But, uh, what are you saying? It's just not well done, in my opinion. It was not a fun game. Yeah, no, it's it's um, real disappointing given everything that uh, all of the build up. Like it was like fuck over a decade. Cause I played Kingdom Hearts two in like junior high, and that yeah. came out like just a couple years ago now. Yeah, um, I played Kingdom Hearts one without a memory card. Mm, yeah. So I had to beat it I, in one sitting. Oh, I did that with two, and my grandma kept like turning it off. <laughs> when I was still in, like, the Roxas area at the beginning. Oh. oh. I had to beat all of one in one sitting. And then we finally got memory cards, so I was able to beat two when we got that. And then... Or no, I had my own PlayStation by that point. I had moved out, um, I think. Oh, let me see when that fucking game came out. Kingdom Hearts 2 release. 2005? Okay, that, that sounds about right. Yeah, I would have been about to move out by then. I moved out in 2006. So, yeah, I beat it. And I, I started thought, high yeah, school in 2006. <laughs> Corey and I graduated. Or no, Corey graduated in 05. I graduated in 06. Damn. Um, That's, you know what always fu uh, fucks with my head? Daniel Avedon of the Game Grumps went to college and graduated in the 90s. Yeah. That, I just, it just throws me off because, like, he seems so much younger than he is. Like, yeah. when he posts on Instagram, like, oh, this is my best friend from, like, kindergarten, and it's like, that guy looks significantly older than you, but now they're the same age. Danny just look, has that baby face. He's seven years older than me and Corey. Wow. Yeah, he looks um, younger than Corey somehow, yet... He's at least 40 by now. Yeah, no, I think he's, um... A little, little older than 40 at this point, yeah. He can't be much older. He's, because Aaron and I are the same age. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they've mentioned several times that Dan is seven years older than Aaron. Okay. They, and um, I'm 33, uh, next month. Right. So, I think, that would um, mean... Dan said he was, like, in his mid-30s when he first started with Grumps. Which was about seven or eight years ago. About eight, yeah. They're getting, coming up on their eighth anniversary soon. 
So Dan can't be much older than 41 or 40. Wait, he's got to be around 40 to 41. I guess it's one of those things that depends on the time of year. Mm, like, yeah. you know, at the early half of the year, he's seven years older. At the latter half of the year, he's eight years older. Because, right. like, my sister was born in December. So, uh, for the first half of the year, I am two years older than her. For uh, the last half of the year, I'm three years older than her. Yeah. So it's one of those things where the time of year actually matters kind of funky because of numbering. Yeah, at that point, usually you'd go with like months, which um, my like my older sibling is about like uh, like 22 months older than me. So there's like a brief period, right? I think where they're yeah, where they're only like a year older than me. Yeah. Oh, a two-month period. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it's one of those things for Dan. He can't be older than 41. Let's see. Me, Dan... Or no, that's not how you spell sleep. Me, Daniel, Avidan, H. Right, he's got the one that's uh, spelled like leg. Yeah, he's 41. Born in uh, 1979. Right, yeah, he just at the end of the 70s. Huh. The racist that used to be on the show is younger than me. Yeah, I think he's younger than... He is younger than Aaron. Like, that's part of why... Aaron and I are the same age. <laughs> yes. Uh, you did already say that. Aaron is a couple months older than me, but not by much. He was born in January 87, and I was born in July. <laughs> Jack Septicai is 30. Markiplier's 30. Oh yeah. I think I'm awesome. I'm pretty sure I'm Jack's age. No wait, Jack. what am I saying? I'm 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 like a couple years younger than them. I am twenty-eight. I just said Jack Septicai is 30. I don't know why. Listen, I'm like I'm in game mode here. Then Wolfhard is 17 already? Yeah. They're what they the they grow up. Holly Conrad is 34, Ross and Donovan 33, mm -hmm. Brian, Ninja Brian, throw out a guess. Ninja Brian, keep I'm going to say he's like almost 50 at this point. I'll give you a few uh, remembrance clues. He is a doctor of physics. Right. And has had time to help build a successful comedy band. Yeah, I'm gonna say close to 50. I'm gonna say 47, 48. Somewhere in there. Mm, you're a little high. He's 45. Eh, I'm not too far off. I figured uh, late 40s, but yeah. It's also, he definitely has that, like, like more dadly look to him. How about uh, Weird Al Yankovic? Oh, he's definitely 50s. Maybe even 60s at this point. Let's see. Well, wait. Oh, let me think. In the 80s, he was, like, just under 20, so yeah, he'd be, like, just about 60-ish. He is exactly 60. Yes. Yes! Uh, Matt Pat. I don't you know. You for people who don't like Matt Pat, we sure shit talk and talk about him a lot. 14. 33. Eh. I don't know who Michelle Morrow is. Oh, uh, fuck. Oh, that sounds familiar. Uh, Michelle Morrow. Fuck, why do I know that name? Um. Oh, you know what? She uh, she was one of the people who um, worked. She was one of the show creators of Good Game, along with um, 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 what's his face? Dan Harmon. Uh. Well, no. Dan, wait, they were Dan like Harmon? producers, I think. Then it was um, she and. Uh, uh, Jesse Cox were like consultants or something because they actually are into esports and stuff. So they were the ones who like made sure all that was Jesse Cox and Michelle Morrow. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she's known for Alias as a college student, Super Fan Builds, and Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft. Mmm, that's. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. She will in Good Game. Mothership, Ninja Sex Party 6969. Oh. Uh, Bastionly Nerdy Geek Chic TV. Uh, pen and Paper and Laser Guns. When Strangers Meet. 
Uh, basement Jack, The Young and the Restless, uh, The Adventures of Big Handsome Guy and His Little Friend. <laughs> I don't know so what that is, but I like that title. But she looks like she's like in her mid 20s, she's like 42. Mm. Ben Schwartz. Ben Schwartz. Oh, he's like. Uh, probably about Danny's age, I'd say. You're close. He's 38. Mm. I don't know who Joji is, but he looks familiar. Oh, he was Filthy Frank before. He mostly does music now because, uh, yeah, he recognized how fucked up a lot of the Filthy Frank jokes were. And oh, also, it was it was uh, the the kinds of like videos he was making were giving him seizures, so he had to stop it for health reasons. You know, uh, one over two points out that his brother is uh, one is three years and a day older than him, or maybe just under a day. Uh, that makes me think you might have heard this, but did you know that Justin and uh, Travis McElroy are exactly three years apart? They have the same birthday. Yeah, they have the same birthday. Yeah. And their voices, I don't always know which one of them is speaking. That's what I'm saying. Like, I literally, I have like, a good enough ear that, like, if I listen to somebody long enough, even if they're doing a cartoon a voice. voice that sounds nothing like them, I can yeah. recognize it. But, like, yeah. with those two, I'll be listening to the podcast, and I'll just be like, that's Justin. And then he, J Justin will start talking. I'm like, oh, that was Travis. Like, still, yeah. after listening to dozens of hours of them, I still cannot always tell them apart. Yeah. Um. Like, I know Travis is, like, a little bit more nasal, but every now and then he, he breaks the nasality just enough to sound like Justin, and every now and then Justin sounds just nasal enough to sound like Travis. And for me, it's like every time I listen to, because uh, I don't listen to the podcast. <laughs> I don't watch anything. They do. I get everything McElroy Brothers related from like YouTube animations. Yeah, which is fine. Like it's just cutting out a lot of the 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 other stuff in there. Which the the podcast is pretty much that with more setup between each. And sometimes they don't have bits that are quite as fun, but it's still worth, like, listening to on occasion. I fall asleep to it, so... Sometimes. I like the animated stuff. Like, that's how I got into Game Grumps originally. Yeah, fair was enough. Was Corey sending me Game Grumps animated clips. And a friend of mine just tweeted... Well, I said friend. Someone I follow and respect, and is a friend of a friend. Sure. Which <laughs> I, I I know the feeling that like parasocial of just like we're friends. Well, mm, not yeah, exactly, yeah. but. Um, just tweeted. I know how the cops can be useful. How about we send them after the men who use pro or pictures where they're more attractive friends on dating apps. Mm, yep. Um. That's a good one. Uh, Trump administration replaces Manhattan U.S. Ooh, that sounds shady. I don't know, what the fuck did they do? Replaced a Manhattan U.S. attorney. Um, why? I, 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 I would like to know their reasoning, and then I would like to know the actual reasoning. Uh, well, the actual reasoning is he was investigating Giuliani. Ah, uh, of course. And I can't see the rest of it because it's at the Washington Post. Ah, uh, fucking paywalls, man. I, I try and keep up with news, and then as soon as I hit a paywall, I'm like, no. I can't read this story. I'll wait until someone else covers it who doesn't US do that time, shit. Or US Times, uh, New York Times. Um, I've been leading the investigation against Giuliani. Uh, America's mayor. The decision was made with no notice, taking an aggressive approach in a number of cases that have vexed the Trump administration. Vex. Guilty pleas. Got four more here. So it just sounds like, you know, they quietly did it and they don't care about giving a reason why anymore. No, of course not. It's just not fucking fascism. Like, they know there's no legitimate reason, but they just want to at least pretend until they stop having to give one. Ooh, one more. One more. Where's that? Here's a good uh, response to, like, not directly to speaking out, but 
But, but, but not all age gap relationships are harmful. How can you tell which ones are predatory? Mm. When the younger person releases a statement saying the relationship was predatory, that's a good clue. It's usually a good clue. Yeah. Um. Where's the last one? Oh. I have a lot of time. I have a, a rule. Wait, you, you said the half your age plus seven years? Yeah. For me, it's if you are closer in age to my son than you are to me. Yes, you have that. You have the privilege of that rule of thumb. And he's twelve, so if you are younger, I'm, or he's twelve, I'm thirty-two, so I'm exactly twenty years older than him. Which means, if you are more than ten years younger than me, no. Yeah. Twenty-two and up for me now. Thirty or twenty-three next year. Or, next month like that's my line like fair enough yeah because you're gonna you, there's nothing we'll have in common exactly oh there's less one yes holy shit i had one health left <laughs> that I, gotta, was... I gotta wonder if we're gonna get kicked off of twitch for playing a game in which you're choking a chicken listen and you're like yes last one Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good point, Hesh. Like, if they're actually, like, care about spreading the news and journalism, you'd think that they would, uh, they'd be ready to do it. Yeah, that's actually, Hesh has a point. I forget because sometimes they refer to her like that, but Kazooie isn't a chicken. She's a fictional, uh, bird called a Breagle. Okay, Hesh, I'm just gonna honestly um, say... Fuck. <laughs> it's a joke. I'm making a dirty joke. Um, we ain't into the dirty the jokes here. This is a clean Christian. We're not the young bucks. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> We're not good Christian boys. Listen, maybe you aren't. I bet you don't even know what Obadiah 316 says. I know what Obadiah Stain said in Iron Man. Alright then. Tony Stark built this in <laughs> a cave! He's a masochist anyway. With a box of scraps! Kazooie's a masochist. <laughs> According to 1 over 2. Oh, um, Kazooie's into it. Like, there is discomfort in those in any egg shooting for her, and she's still, she's still here for it. Alright, Iggy, if you're such a good Christian, what does Austin 316 say? Uh... Uh, hold on. Uh... Austin 316 <laughs> says, I just kicked your ass. Alright, what does RVD 420 say? <laughs> this one's my favorite. I like, don't know that one. <laughs> when Austin was at the height of his fame in like 98, 99, uh -huh. uh, RVD cut a promo in ECW saying, RVD 420 says I just smoked your ass. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was like, that is the fucking best parody. Everyone else can stop. Yep, you're not going to top that. Although, you, know you where... say that, but then when, you fu when there is the one that tops it, you're like, fuck. It's, it's too solid. It's gonna have to be really good. It's gonna have to be really good. It's gonna have to be. Do you know where Austin 316 came from? Um, I've seen the clip, but I don't remember what the context is. So, like almost all good things in wrestling, it came from Shawn Michaels and Triple H and the click being, uh, breaking rules and getting in trouble. Right. So originally, that year, I think it was like 95, 96, Triple H was slated to win King of the Ring. Then, uh, right before they left for WCW, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Shawn Michaels, and Triple H go out to the ring to give a hug goodbye because they're all super close friends in the middle of the ring. Uh, Hesh, we're talking more about Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, when we refer to Austin 316. Or as Danhausen prefers to phrase it, 
Cold Steve. Um, Cold Steve. <laughs> Danhausen's like nicknames for people fucking kill me. Um, uh, Danhausen in general kills me. That's yeah. hilarious. And so they broke kayfabe in the middle of the ring, and it got filmed Ooh. and shared at a house show. Uh oh. And so. You know, Hall and Nash were gone, and Shawn Michaels was their top boy at the time. Can't punish him. Right. So Triple H caught all the shit. Oof. He just got shoved down the card, uh, didn't get to do, you know, King of the Ring and win, so they oh. changed it to have Steve Austin pin Jake Roberts to win. And Steve goes out there and he's like, we need you to cut a promo. And he goes out and he's like, well, Jake Roberts is doing his Born Again thing right now. Mm -hmm. You come out here, you talk about your Psalms, you talk about your John 316s, well, Austin 316 says I just kicked your ass. Yeah, and yeah. He, there, that still wasn't <laughs> the beginning of his push. Like, that was, you know, fans latching on. WWE... At nay F at the time, um, didn't catch on until they started seeing like fans holding up Austin 316 signs. Uh, Steve tells the story, or I think it's McFoley tells the story of there was a point in the company where they were they had an agent walking around backstage with a clipboard with everyone's name on the clipboard, and then like uh, you know vertically down the side was everyone's name horizontally across the top was different kinds of merch they could you know sign up to get sure and they you know passed it around and people were checking off things and they had already pre-checked off everything next to mark henry's name hmm. because they were planning on building him to be a huge star and nothing like they didn't even pan it to stone cold <laughs> and steve just yells hey how about a stone cold t-shirt <laughs> and they're like, mm, how about? And it just kind of like moved on. And then you wound oh, up man. being like the biggest thing in the company. Yep. And I think that's pretty Rock. emblematic of how poorly they foresee uh, the, the will of the fans. And at this point, they don't give a shit about the will of the fans. So, yeah. Um, yeah, they had no faith in him until they started seeing like, there was an unquenchable demand for more Steve Austin. And, yeah, he blew up. It was, and, like, more had to happen first. Well, sure. First, he had a great match with Bret Hart, wherein they did a double turn mid-match. Mm. Um, and it led to this beautiful, like, just powerful fucking image of Steve in the sharpshooter as blood poured down his face mm. like and he's like screaming refuses to tap out and instead uh passes out from pain and blood loss damn and it's like dustin at double or nothing right like it's that level of blood on the face i was gonna say yeah I, did you think maybe that was like part of their um what, like homage. was that homage yeah um, it, it's entirely possible, but it also just used to be a more prevalent thing in wrestling. Yeah, and then the PG era happened. Well, no, that's more recent. Um, Vince always wanted it to be a Saturday morning cartoon kind of setup. Right. That's why you had such silly characters like Repo Man and um, Duke the Dumpster Brody and... Isaac fucking Yankum, who was played by Kane. Um, oh. Yeah. You go back and look up Isaac Yankum, DDS. You get it? I Yankum. Ha 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 ha. And The Undertaker came about because of all that. Uh, IR, IRS, Erwin R. Scheister, which, mmm. Nice anti-Semitism in your uh, money-grubbing character there, Vince. Very well done. Yeah, I don't, I don't care for how uh, stereotypical 
some some of the the names, especially from that era, were. Do you know who that is, by the way? Who was it? That was the Fiend's dad. Oh. Bray Wyatt's dad and Bo Dallas as well. Who you don't know who that is because fucking they don't use him. He was in a tag team and they just released his partner. So fucking. I don't know the last time Bo Dallas had a match on TV. Mm. That's how little they trust him. And he was huge. He's one of those that shows why. If you're in NXT, just stay there. Mm. Don't leave. Because he was a champ. He was top of the card. He was a draw. And then they took him to WWE and were like, Alright, all that you did there, we're going to make you a motivational speaker. Where you go out and say, all you have to do is believe. Like, oh my god. Fucking God, really? So, yeah. Vince wanted it to... Like, he literally had Saturday morning shows. And then uh, WCW was like, well, we're going to make our show more realistic, more grounded in reality. We'll bring in a gang that runs roughshod over everybody. And that was the NWO. And so WWE had to move into the Attitude Era. They didn't have a choice. And so... That's when Stone Cold got famous, that's when Undertaker got big, Kane, Mankind, uh, D-Generation X kicked out Shawn Michaels, um, that was, you know, their highest period of success. And they were drawing, you know, three million viewers nights nice some nights, now they can barely get one million. Right. They're, and shit's just circling the drain and they're like, oh, it's because of the coronavirus. Like, no, it's not. Really isn't. Shit's been going bad for years. Yeah, you've ju they've just been able to coast. And now they, it's, like, very clear that they're just, like... That's the thing, is when things start going bad, it's not going to have an immediate effect because you have people who are going to be in at least some denial that it's started getting bad. So you'll still kind of stay for a bit, but it'll plateau. And if you don't do something when it hits that plateau, it's going to dip. And that's kind of the exact situation they've gotten themselves in. Yeah, and there, you know, there are alternatives. Like, you don't have to watch WWE anymore. You can watch Ring of Honor. You can watch New Japan. You can watch Impact. You can watch NWA Power. You can watch our favorite AEW. Yep. You can watch your local indie promotion. You can watch stuff on YouTube. There's plenty out there. You don't. You're not beholden to WWE if you want to watch wrestling anymore. Exactly. And it's an all, often case. It's always better to just watch something else. Yeah. If they want you back, they will do something to make it worth it. But. As it stands right now, they think that they're too good to change. Yeah, and they're not. They're really, really not. And that's hurting them. Yeah, exactly. And it has been for a while, but like now, now is when it, this all hit the fan. It's like, you have no more excuse, guys. It's pretty obvious what's happening. And you're, you're happy with how it's going. Or you would actually try and make it better, but you choose not to. Wait, it's your decision at this point that you've not changed. Yeah. And many people will tell you, oh, we're working for an audience of one. And that's the truth. Like, you can tell their one show that's good is the one he's not in charge of. Mm -hmm. And to be clear to any viewers who aren't aware, who is this one? It's Vince McMahon, like, the one person in charge of the whole company, like, uh, god damn, I, I don't even, so Bruce Pritchard was just put in charge of both shows, mm -hmm. Smackdown and Raw, because Paul Heyman had been running Raw, and it had been getting great reviews from fans, I wasn't gonna come back, because, like, the fucking stories weren't what I'm interested in, um, not, saying that I'm not interested in stories like that's my favorite part of wrestling of course it's what they were running weren't good enough for my attention um but I keep up with like I like the backstage stuff so I watch wrestle talk 
removed and covers it all. Um, and... Uh, it's just not been stuff I want to see. Yeah. So I'm not bothered coming back. And, you know, and say what you will about WWE, I will give them credit here. They at least have stories for their women's division. That's true. That is where AEW was sorely lacking. So what exactly is going on in the game? Not to cut in, but I'm honestly not familiar with B or Banjo Kazooie, to be honest, besides the Game Boy one. Oh, hey, uh, that's interesting that that's the one you do know of. Um, yeah, currently. What's going on in the game is Iggy is sucking. Listen, and wasting all our goddamn time. I'm doing my best to find, uh, I believe. Four more jiggies. Once I find four more, then I can open up the last boss. But as it stands right now, it's a lot of meandering trying to find stuff. It's, it's especially because a lot of the stuff that you do at this point in the game is like way longer. Like, you might have seen what I was doing earlier. Like, I had to go. I had to open up some things, to open up some other things, to get like the ability to go to a boss. And then the boss open up an area where I could go get a Jiggy. So that was just one, and I need to be able to get a lot, like, I need to get four more, but I'm just, yeah, I'm working on it. Iggy needs the Jiggy. Iggy do need the Jiggy. I'm not getting into Ziggy. I'm not a fan of Ziggy. I'm I don't like hate it or anything, it's just, it is a dull, dull comic strip. I meant like a zigzag. Zigzag, like the candy bar? No, that's Zagna. Zagna. Well, actually, no, I'm thinking of... I was thinking of Abba Zabba for some reason. Now you just make a shit up. Oh, you never had an Abba Zabba? The delicious. Look, what you do in the privacy of your bedroom with your own consenting partner is up to you. An Abba Zabba is a bar of white top taffy that has, like, a, a, a crunchy peanut butter center. It's that chewy, awful. crunchy. Oh, it's so good. Wasn't the last area in the second game that cloud place, or is this the penultimate uh, dungeon? This is actually like the third to last. The last one is the cloud place, but that it is a nightmare trying to get anything done in Cloud Cuckoo Land, because like everything is just so spread out, and you have to like take different like you have to take like weird paths to get to anything. So it's yeah, I'm I'm. I'm gonna have a little more success using this region rather than trying to do anything over there. Okay. This is not where I wanted to go. So, um... Yeah, uh, in case you can't tell, we really like wrestling. <laughs> yes. Uh, wrestling history in general. Mm -hmm. Um... I mean, we should do a podcast, like... You know, like a, a, a YouTube-style podcast about the history of wrestling. Oh yeah, yeah, we should. Yeah, uh, that would be a really interesting thing. We could call it like Championship <laughs> University or something like that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and he just sat there and looked at me and shook her head slowly. Let's see. I mean, yeah. I, I spread myself much too thin. I, I am constantly working on stuff, but like, ooh man, I, I have a bad, bad, bad time like focusing long enough to finish a thing. I know the feeling, bro. That I... well, there's a lot of wrestling coverage, but specifically wrestling history, pro wrestling history, I've not been able to find like a concrete like, just front-to-end chronological history. Like, there's been a couple of books that are, like, chapter book length that kind of gloss over a lot of it. Yeah. But there's a lot. Like, the, for instance, the roots of wrestling start in traveling circuses and carnivals. Yep. And that is the full extent of what you'll be told in some of those history books. Because there's mostly just there to like show off pictures and like hey this guy was around and that's it and then they get to like the point where like the 80s and 90s then they go deep in um like there's a lot like the, the 
closest you'll really find that does any good work on it would be like um, what culture or cultaholic that they do like top 10 things you didn't know about stone cold colon like fucking wait they'll cover some of that kind of history but it's always like or 10 wrestlers you didn't know faced andre the giant and slammed him like okay we get it like and i watched the videos like i'm not gonna act like i don't but it's it's there's more a lot of fluff yeah you know it's more like, you don't get a lot of actual story you get like two minutes to explain like number 10 hulk hogan now let's get it out of the way everybody knows hulk hogan was the first to slip at andre the giant in wrestlemania 3 or was he actually he'd been slammed many times before in japan we'll get to that later yeah, yeah like number nine like it's, it's just piecemeal stuff that you gotta work through yourself if you ever want a full, like, a full, uh, picture. Um, I feel like Russell Talk and Luke Owen put out a book that was better. Hmm. Um, but it's still a book. Like, sometimes you don't want that, you know? Sometimes you want something else, like podcast or video or something like that right where it's just you know because i drive a lot and like a lot of what i do is not uh what's the word i'm looking for i can't i when i was a kid i loved reading right right and now as an adult i i struggle to read paper books I haven't read an entire paper book in two years because hmm. it's difficult for me to sit down and actually focus on a book anymore. Like, I, I can understand that. I also like took a long break from long form reading, but I mean, we also, as a culture, we read more than we ever have because people just read stuff on the internet. Uh, yes, Hesh, that is exactly what you'll find. Yeah, it's it's all matchups and it's not um, it's not a lot of the the story, even though the story is kind of the main draw of the entire like form. So Wrestle Talk has Almanax that they put out. Almanax, um, okay. They put out two. They're like seven, like they're on sale. Usually they're about fifteen pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what that is in real money. Um, like twenty bucks, I think. The creators of Wrestle Talk magazine comes the first or comes Wrestle Talk's book, first ever book is the the most comprehensive guide to wrestling in 2017. So mm. it's very year specific, right? Um, so there's no really good one source. Like you can find like Wikipedia and whatnot, but. There's no one curating all that and saying, you know Alright, spent... here's the story. Yeah. I spent so much fucking time, like, doing all of these rabbits. I gotta find the last one. It would be such a waste of time if I spent all of that. Hold on. Banjo. Do that rabbit. Do we. Uh, actually, why did I even pull this out of the thing? Banjo Tui, walkthrough guide. Yes, I'm using okay. a walkthrough. Shush. So, um, you know, a lot of people don't talk about the fact that wrestling started in the carny system, and that's why wrestling slang is called carny. And a lot of wrestling slang is also like old school, like slang in general. So, like, phrases like, ah, what a heel. Like, you'll hear that in, like, Looney Tunes. Mm -hmm. And that's a phrase still used, like, for bad guys. They are the heels of Run Invalidated. <laughs> run this Invalidated? Says, this says one over two. I oh, believe damn. in response to you. Listen. Um, uh, so, like, you know, baby face gets shortened to face over time. Jobber is somebody who is doing the job. For, they're doing their job by losing. Um... Yeah, there's a like you can learn carny really quickly 
everything and then suddenly understand like everything wrestlers are saying um but wrestling history is a lot of rest in peace nimrod's reputation is a name yeah do you know why nimrod is an insult now because of bugs bunny calling elmer fudd a nimrod and like people didn't read their bibles well enough apparently because nimrod was a famous hunter and like was a legendary hunter and like oh nimrod must mean idiot like nincompoop and so now we think of nimrod as a fucking idiot when really it just he was mocking elmer by comparing him to an actually effective hunter Escape, swamp. You weren't listening at all, Higgins. I'm. Do you want to do a break? No, no, I got this. Okay, I know where the last rabbit is. There's only one left. I got. I remember the rest, but this one. Let's see on the. Kill the rabbit. Kill the rabbit. I am helping the rabbit. He's got dirty clothes. He's a dirty boy. I got to clean up his dirty clothes so that they don't uh, they don't fire him because uh, capitalism is evil and we need to return the means of production to the workers. Workers of the world unite. Thank you. Anarcho communism. Huh? Anarcho-communism. Did you see the thing where Fox News uh, reported a Monty Python quote thinking it was serious? Oh, look! One over two actually recognized your your Iggins reference. Yeah. yeah I, that's exactly I, it. I do that to people. Like, I hate having my name shortened. I hate it, but I do it to everyone else. Well, that is a lengthening, in fact. Alright, let me rephrase. I hate having my name put into the diminutive mm, anyway. Fair, fair. And I do it to everybody. Like, I uh, absolutely do it to people without intending to. But yes, it is an Invader Zim reference. Mm -hmm. Um. And. Uh, but yeah, um. That was the guy. You know what's funny is I actually saw the Johnny comics before I saw Invader Zim. Yeah, I mean, they were pretty obscure, and a lot of people have only gone back to them because of Invader Zim. But I That's wish more people I would. Them, they're, a little, they're a little rough. They're obviously some of his early work, and you can tell he was, like, learning things as he made the comic. But they're still pretty solid. Yeah, and, like, the art style is already well established. But yeah, well, I mean... It's one of those things similar to the Scott Pilgrim comics where if you look at like the first page and the last page, you can see a huge amount of improvement. Do you know what's crazy? Mm. Do you know where I bought those comics originally? Where's that? Hot Topic. Oh. They used to sell those. They used to sell Ronan Dirge's uh, Lenore. They used to sell Squee. They used to sell, like, all these comics. And, like, they were so Shit. good. And, like, I'm sure if I went back and reread, like, some of them, I'd be like, mm, mm. Yeah. Bad habit if you don't want to get nicknamed. I don't mind getting nicknames if it's not a diminutive of my regular name. Yeah. Um, like, I don't like Andy or Drew or... Um, Andre, things like that. Um, but what? fuck Pig McJiggles, you're totally cool with that one. Yeah! That's fine. Like, I don't mind a completely separate nickname. Or people for a long time call me by my last name for some reason. Um, I don't mind that. Uh, I don't like that as much, but you know, I'm not gonna fucking... Like, everyone in my high school for some reason referred to me by my last name. I never introduced myself by my last name. None of my friends call me by my last name. But everyone else is like, bitch! And I'm like, okay. Whatever. Okay. I don't, like, I never corrected them, because, like, the fucking, what does it matter, but... Uh, let me tell you a story about one time someone called me by my last name, and it didn't end well for me. 
I was with my son's mom, who is very, very jealous of just anything. Like, she accused me of cheating on her a lot. A lot. Like, to a point where if I were home late 15 minutes from work, it's clearly because I was screwing someone at work. Um, so, one time we're at the county fair, and we hear, BENCH! And I turn around, and a girl in a corset top and leather pants, well, that's all I can see, launches herself through the air, latches on to me, and is just like hanging off my torso. Oh, wow. And I'm like, hi! And I'm like, do I hug back? I'm doing that, like, hands up, don't shoot, like, fucking... I, like, pat her on the back, and then she gets down, and I see it's a friend from high school, and I was like, oh, hey, blank! And we chatted for a little bit, and I feel the side of my face catch fire. And I look over, and I am getting a death glare from my son's mom. And... She, clearly that meant I was fucking that girl who I didn't recognize until she got out of my arms. And right. despite the fact she was there with her uh, partner at the time. Clearly, clearly I was having wild orgies with everyone and just not inviting her. Mm -hmm. That would have been bad enough. But then, a couple months later, we go to see Pirates of the Caribbean... What? It had just come out, so this would have been no six oh seven. I think that'd be the third one. No, that'd be the second one, right? I'm googling at World's End. That's the third one. So we're seeing that one. We leave the theater, and someone else, Andrew. Like we were in another town. We had driven to another town to see the movie. Right. And we hear, Andrew! And the person, like, flips into my arms from, like, a side-standing position. And, like, just spins into my arms. And inadvertently, unintentionally, hit my son's mother in the, like, chest to push her out of the way. And, uh, yeah. Uh, that was Corey's sister. Oh. Yeah. Man, people are real friendly with you. Oh, uh, yeah. And I'm not a hugger. <laughs> I am uncomfortable with hugs if I am not, like, romantically involved or very close. Like, Tiffany, like, yeah, fine, sure. We've yeah. been together. We've been friends for years. Almost as long as I've been friends with Court. Mm -hmm. The other girl never hugged me in her entire fucking life until that moment. Hmm. And, like... I think we said like three words to each other in high school. I had friends I didn't realize, like, for years. And it goes back to that thing of, I didn't realize people were flirting with me for a long time. Yes, yeah. yeah, surprise hugs are terrible. Please, please. Gauge the situation first. And ask. Like, yeah. even if it's, like, you can do the, like, arms out thing and kind of like, eh, eh. And if they say, mm, please don't, don't force it. Yeah, and... It's, it's very, uh, so, there are very few people I feel comfortable hugging, like, in general. Mm -hmm. You're, my girlfriend just leaned over, she's not one of them. <laughs> Get off of me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> there's very, very few. Um, so, like, Corey and that family, fine, yeah. They're, they're family. Um... But like, man, y'all are part of the family now too, so whatever. Uh, but like, just in general, no. And like, I was at a convention in cosplay one time, and uh, what are you doing? Sorry, I'm just looking up because I have one more jiggy in this specific world, and I'm just trying to see if I can remember which one it, it is. Oh, you're scrolling through your phone. Oh yeah, sorry. The phone is right here. <laughs> I thought that was your microphone. I was like, no, my is... microphone's here. Phone's up here, it's which like, is what you're coming out of. Why is her microphone all of a sudden? 
one time I refused somebody's handshake for personal reasons and they asked if a hug would work better. No! Why would that work better? Like, now please don't touch me in the most minimal way possible. Clomp me. Uh, so... I was at a convention in cosplay one time. And some people were asking, like, can we get photos with you? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And, like, that was weird. It was very, like, surprising to suddenly be uh, the center of attention like that. Yeah. It might have been because it was a locksmith convention and not a comic convention, and I was dressed as Lobo. Might have been it, but... Anyway, uh, no, so... One of my friends, we met up with some friends there, and his wife was dressed as whoever the pink princess from Adventure Time is. Uh, Princess Bubblegum. Sure. And this young girl, like high school age, comes up to us and is like, looks like she just met Justin Bieber, has that look on her eye. She's like, can I get a photo with you? And my first wife, like, gets all, like, giggly and, like, flips her hair like me. And she's like, no, him. Mm. And points at me. Nice. And, like, the look of, because... Yeah, that's I've an never... obscure enough character that, yeah, any chance you get, it's like, yeah, yeah definitely got to get a picture with any cosplayer of that. Yeah. And, like, the friend's wife and I didn't hate each other. We just, like never spoke and you kind of got the feeling that she just did not like me and that's fine like i don't mind if somebody doesn't like me i'm fine right. uh i don't need everybody to like me i know what i bring to the table i don't know like you you were there did you think that she gave off a vibe of like i'd really rather go somewhere else now i'm talking to maddie by the way i figured yeah She's like, no, For a second, I was so, like, I wasn't. There. What are you talking about? So Maddie just gave me a, a no, so maybe I'm reading too much into it. Hmm. Again, I can't read people very well. I'm not good at social interaction. So, uh, just the look on her face when this, you know, she was either high school or very early 20s and just short. Hmm. She was one of those, she could either be 12 or 32. Mm, and yeah. you can't tell which. So, uh, I was just like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I take the picture. And she, like, runs off, like, excited. I'm like, huh, weird. I would have thought she wanted a picture with you. And, like, the other girl's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> like, I just kind of got quiet after that and didn't, you know, say anything else. Because I was like, did I do something wrong? And... It was weird, like, how many people wanted to take pictures and, like, several photos at a time. Like, I would hear, like, the snap burst sound effect. Like, huh, I'm kind of surprised people want pictures of me this bad. And, like, that one one guy stopped me and was like, oh, man, I love that character. And Morbius, right? I'm like, no. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's another obs obscure one, but like, yeah. you know, not nearly like some, as. One person thought I was Bloodshot. Bloodshot. They made a Bloodshot which movie, a which is Vin interesting. Is playing now. Yeah, I think that's like out on digital or something. I'm yeah. vaguely interested. No. The, the effects look kind of cool. Shit. Uh, I I read like one Bloodshot comic and it. I don't know that Liefeld made Bloodshot. Oh, yeah, that totally but, that totally fits. I I honestly had not heard of the character prior to that, but now that you say Liefeld, that yeah, that tracks. Uh, if he's not a uh, Liefeld character, let's see. Character was created by Dev Kevin Van Hook, Don Perlin, and Bob Lee. It took three people to come up with a character whose entire gimmick is he's hard to kill and shoots people. Mm. It took three of y'all to come up to, like, land on that idea. Yeah, I mean, I'm... Okay, I'm going to assume he's a 90s character. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so 92. that's... that's Yeah, that's just par for the course for most characters who were made in that time. Because of the Liefeld influence. Mm-hmm. 
like Liefeld had a heavy hand on influencing like the crappiest comics trends yep, of the nineties. Yep, he full on b ushered in the dark ages. Uh, and for what it's worth, like, and honestly, because of that era, that's where you get these like people like I don't want politics in my comics. Like, then don't fucking read them. No. Like, they you're gonna have a hard time considering out. that. Pretty much, like, every comic is rooted in politics. Even like, the ones that don't seem like they are. Superman is super political. Yeah. The entire 70s run of Green Lantern was a big political statement. On what? Uh, like, Superman was created in the early 1900s at the height of, like, anti-Semitic uh, sentiments in the country and the world. And created by two Jewish writers about an immigrant who comes to America to seek a better life and makes things better for everyone and, you know, still rich, powerful men do not like him. Like, yep. that's... And, like, the the saying, Green Lantern, uh, mid-70s Green Lantern, uh, how did that go? So, it started with one of the most powerful commentaries in comic history that I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Green Lantern is just like chilling out, wandering around a neighborhood, and somebody's like, "This is." Or they were telling him, that, "You know, there's some shady shit going on with the land lord." Mm. And he's like, "Well, but they're not breaking the law, so there's not really anything I can do." Because Green Lantern, while my favorite superhero for, a, you know, just in general, uh, still a cop. You know? Yeah. And Hal Jordan, the copiest of all. Um, so, Ryan Reynolds still is a good portrayal of that Green Lantern character, but... Uh, it gets to a point where, like, he's actively doing harm by not doing good. Yeah. And uh, Green Arrow chews him the fuck out for it. And there's this panel of an elderly black man asking him, you know, saying to him, you've done things for purple folk, orange folk, green folk, blue folk, but what have you done for any black people lately? And fucking, yeah. Yeah. So Green Lantern, or Green Arrow, chews Green Lantern's ass out and says, this country is a great country with a lot of problems, and it's dying. And we can do something about it. You're doing nothing. And he's like, I can't. Uh, the, my bosses wouldn't let me use my power for that. So he goes and chews out the Guardians of the Galaxy himself. Go Ollie. And then, um... Oh, hey, we're getting raided by Sleepyhead Jolteon. Thank you. Thank you. And so he chews out the Guardians, and one of the Guardians is like, All right. I've heard what you have to say. Let's go and see for ourselves. So they go on this cross-country tour in a pickup truck, the three of them. Nice. Driving across America to, like, see what the country is like. And, uh... You know, it leads to Green Lantern saying, Wow, yeah, shit's fucked. I should do something about it. Yeah. And then... That, you know... He spends the entire 70s doing this tour with Green Arrow and the Guardian and making things better. Um, Superman, always political. Uh, Wonder Woman, super political. Pretty like, much everything Marvel is putting out has been, like, heavily political from the beginning. I mean, X-Men, Black Panther, yeah. I mean, it's, come on. Yeah. Um, You'd have to have your head pretty far up your own ass to not see the the history and like people holding up like these comics weren't political when i was growing up like then you didn't see it like that's you. that's always my thing is like if you're here's the thing all media is political a there's no such thing as apolitical media and if you don't think it's political then you are interpreting it wrong they're, they're, like no matter how innocuous something might be like say uh, Man of Steel, right? Like, obviously, there's the the built-in, there's the built-in um, 
there, Captain there... America literally debuted punching a Nazi. Exactly. Uh, As uh, one over two is pointing out, like, like there's the obvious, like, um, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, climate change. Like that's just inherent in Superman's story, considering yeah. how they fuck up Krypton. But then, like, within that, they're pretty heavily pro-military, because Superman does not respect most Earthlings in that movie, but he respects anybody with a military uniform. So that is at least. That is political. That is a political choice that the filmmakers made that he would be respectful of the military and show his and approval in that way. And he's not always a man. Man is still son. Yeah, but no, it, it was, it was pretty bad. It's a good representation of Superman. It's a, yeah, it's a good representation of what Zack Snyder thinks superheroes should be like, but uh, Maggie Mayfish actually just did a video on that, so uh, absolutely something to watch. Well, that's the thing is, the, well, that the point is that all media is political because no matter what, your, the writer's biases will come through. Whether it is intentionally political or not, there are political implications of everything. And if you're not recognizing them, you're either, it, it's generally because you have the privilege to ignore those types of things. Like a lot of media ha is racially political in subtle ways that a lot of people don't recognize because they have the privilege to ignore it. For instance, uh, friends, right? Yeah. Bunch of white people. Oh yeah. Very, very few people of color. You know what? You know why friends exists? Why? Because one of the executives at the network saw uh, living, uh, living single and was like, "What if we did that but with white people?" Oh. Uh, and it became a lot more popular because I've actually never heard of living single. Really? And that shows exactly how that, uh, how effective that was. Uh, it started Queen Latifah living with some friends and talking about their uh, boyfriends. And, yeah, it was a really good show. I mean, even we Friends was like up before my time. Single. So. Ooh, in an angry kind of world. I'm glad I got my girls. Get your head up. Why? Get your head up. That's fun. Yeah, I fucking love living single as a kid. Living Single debuted uh, and aired from 93 to 98. Uh, yeah, that's recognize... the thing. I was born in 92, so it ended yeah. when I was six. You would recognize some of the actors and actresses. Sure, um, yeah. I mean, Queen Latifah, for one. Yeah, which honestly, um, it sounds like that that's the thing that she's known for prior to her movie she was role. A rapper. Well, yeah, that too. But, yeah, um, and so, but similar to how Will Smith didn't really get that well known until Fresh Prince. Jolteon says you've been sleepy rated. Thank, thank you, you. Man. Like, that's, or thank you, regardless of I'm not sure of gender. Uh, yes. We appreciate that. Like, yeah. Um, we need a word that like can replace like dude or man. Like at the end of the, like, man, I hate this. Like, we need something that's. Like, yo, like, yo doesn't carry the same, like, heft. Right. There's, like, a lot of words that have been such a part of our cultural furniture that are problematic now that, you know, we need to... Okay, thank you. Uh, we, we just want to be inclusive. And, like, Fair there's enough. so many words that I would wish, like, we had a equivalent for that carries that same heft. Right. Coco says comrade. Comrade's pretty good. Comrade's good, but, man, like, say I did it again, but, like, um, like, the word, uh, uh, there was one the other day, like, bitch, like, I was like, I want to call somebody something, and that was, like, the word I knew in my head would hit the hardest for somebody, and I'm friend like, is pretty... not a word I'm going to use. Friend is a pretty good one, but it's, uh, it's a little too easy to sound sarcastic calling someone friend. Yeah. Yeah, it's it sounds like Aaron Hansen doing the friend dog voice. Yeah. It, 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 it sounds like you're taking the piss. Come on, come on. There we go. Uh, but yeah, Living Single was great. Uh, okay. And yeah, by comparison, Friends was Suck. pretty much the same thing. But it was not as good. I never liked Friends. I never liked Science Oh no, Fr Friends is a garbage show. 
<laughs> most of, the only reason most people liked it is because it's what was there. Yeah. Like that you didn't really have as much choice back then, so you kind of just watched what was on, and friends ended up getting a lot of play. Yeah. And people who still like talk about it, like. Uh, I don't get it. Mad eggs. But like for me, I think. Cousin's good. pretty good. It's a it's a little cultural, so I feel a little uncomfortable saying it not being Hawaiian, but that is a that is a solid one. Yeah. Or uh see, southerners can get away with it instead of saying, hey guys, we can go, hey y'all. Y'all's good. Yeah, if you live here now, you can use it. You're oh, I was using it before because I was from rural Washington where it definitely definitely gets it's a lot of use. Yeah. Y'all is and what's funny, uh, y'all, it's just such a good use of work, because it's you all. Yeah. It's just a contraction of you all. It's a, it's because, a solid one. Uh, because upper class people didn't come up with it. Y'all ain't a word. Ain't sure. is a word, by the way. Because yeah. upper class folks did come up with that. Yeah, and it means, means it am not. Them. It's, uh, they abandoned it when, uh, uh, fucking... Yola is handy. I feel like a big southerner doing it. <laughs> Y'all, you want to hear my actual, like, accent, by the way? Because you've never heard me speak with my actual, like, speaking voice. Oh. Not if you, like, and Maddie really? hates it when I do it. She, act, she absolutely hates it. I've worked so hard to hide my accent. Kind of like, uh, no. Ross and Doc. No, let me out. How, let me out. Occasionally you'll hear it slip through with Ross. Oh, yeah. I worked so hard for so long to hide mine. Nope. But if I want, if I want, I can slip right into it with no problem. Mm, okay. And it happens way too often if somebody in a hardware store asks me if I need help. I don't know what it is about that setting, but it immediately. Yeah, I need me a skull headed pivot driver. I'm going over there to the goddamn uh, lumber yard here in a minute. I'm going to give you about two yards of wood. I'm going to build me a, a tree house for my son. Yeah, I need me about uh, 300 nails. There we um, go. I hate this fight. It's the same as the fucking Mr. Patch fight from earlier where you're flying around. Yeah. It, it, I thought it looked familiar. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I could just easily drop into that accent. I I have such a weird modeled accent cuz like I I grew up in western Washington which is just like the Cascadian accent which is little Canadian but mostly just like so, like soft Canadian and then I've never even been to Canada. It's it's pretty cool. I like I like Vancouver a lot. Um it's worth checking out at least once. It's a nice Nice place. Very cold. Well, when we move, I'll be close enough I can go check it out. Oh yeah, it's like a five-hour drive from uh from Seattle. And if you get, I don't know if they still do it, but they used to have these um these enhanced license plates that were for truckers or not license plate uh 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 what do you driver's licenses? And it was like cheaper than a um it was like cheaper than a passport and everything, so that was how we went to Canada the one time we did. But then, um, yeah, so I have, like, a bit, a little bit of a, a Western accent um, when I'm not focused on it, and I will slip into that, and then sometimes I just, I do a New York accent, and I don't you know where that comes Coco from. for having a Mexican-sounding vocabulary? I do not. I believe uh, Coco here. Listen, I tease Coco about many things, but th that is not one that I can recall, at least. I'm gonna need an example on that one. Yeah, give us an example. Out him. Out, out Iggy. Okay, okay. Let, let's, let's out Iggy on some of the cruel and hurtful things that... It only, it's only some words, lol. No, no, no. Give us examples. We, we, I yeah, need at least canceled. one because I can't think of one. Oh, there we go. So there's some words that I will read that for some reason my brain immediately like says them in Spanish for some reason, but like they don't. 
they're not Spanish words. And I don't have an example, it's just like occasionally I'll be reading something and I'll be like, Anhoi. Oh no, that's enjoy, never mind. Like, why? Like, Anhoi? Why? Why? That's it, the double L always gets me because I just assume that it's gonna oh, be a yeah. yeah sound. Yamas. There's this I one guy agree. on YouTube we watch sometimes called Shafrillas, but I'm always like, ah, Shafrillas. Yeah, anytime I see a double L, it's a uh, yeah instead of la la. And I feel like if we're gonna put double L's in words, we need to start pronouncing each individual L. Right. Bring the bell along. All right, I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna gonna uh, do this one boss fight, which okay. should get me the last jiggy I need. I'll go do the puzzle to unlock the last fight, and then I'll call it a night. And tomorrow, tomorrow will be the time to to uh, get to get that last boss. We're getting jiggy with it. Bow ba da bow ba da bow. Na 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 getting jiggy with it. Man. I, man, I miss the 90s Will Smith. Right. Like, current Will Smith's not bad. Like, let me be clear. He's alright. I just right. wish, like, he felt more comfortable being goofy outside of interviews now. Hmm, yeah. Foolish man. A few more shocks. Like, you're not even, like, worrying about the dialogue. You're like, fuck it. No, I mean, I already did this fight, uh, yesterday, I'm pretty sure, and just lost. So, I, I put it up to y'all to go back and uh, read whatever. Uh, yeah, um, there's like a lot of words that I will read. Is there a language that uses J's as Y's? Uh, yeah, Swedish. Okay. It's called uh, a soft J. Because occasionally I'll see that and I'll like kind of word and I'll just pronounce it as a Y. Yeah. And so I will see the Spanish ha 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 ha, which is in English ja 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 ja. Right. And you see this ya 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 ya. Yeah. And I'm like, what? I don't, I don't know. find French phrases and, you know, sentences and read them phonetically English Fuck. to irritate me. So, uh, let me find something in French that I can do that with. Uh, uh, so, um, oh boy. Already mad. Yeah. Freer Jackwees. Freer Jackwees. Dormez Vals. Dormez Vals. Sonusless Matines. Sonusless Matines. Ding ding dong. Ding ding, ding dong. dong. <laughs> That's good. Maddie is face palming his not big eye contact anymore. <laughs> Uh, what was it? There was something specific I was doing that with him. Do you remember that? Where there was some... I can do it with Ramstein song. <laughs> oh... Oh boy. Well, I mean, Ramstein's German, isn't it? Yeah, but they have a song called, uh, Furling in Paris. Oh. Where the... Uh... Chorus is in French. Uh, so it's Onama, Ryan de Ryan, Onan, Jenna Regretti Ryan. Which should be properly pronounced Onon Rion Rion, Ono Jenna Regretti Rion. Which is Ono Nothing to Nothing, Ono I Regret Nothing. It's 
about losing his virginity uh, as a teenager to a French hooker. Which I don't believe is an autobiographical story because they all grew up in East Germany. Uh, I mean, that's and, pretty rock and roll. Huh? It's pretty rock and roll, though, if it is true. Uh, I don't think, like I said, I don't think it is because they were East German. And, like, Richard Krupps tells the story about when they, when he first got a guitar, he didn't get it to play music. Hmm. He had gotten it because he knew that he could sell it for more money in East Germany than what he made for in West Germany. So he snuck across the wall into West Germany, bought a guitar, and came back. And a girl saw him with it and was like, Oh my god, play something for me. And he's like, I don't know how to play a guitar. I just bought this. She's like, it's okay, just play something for me. And so he just like what? starts wailing on the guitar. And she's losing her mind. He's like, oh, this could work well for me. We're literally not even playing anything. Like, not even scales. And he, like, she was just like, ah, because that's how starved for fun they were in East Germany. That's, well, oh, that's a fair point. I always want to listen to more Rammstein, but I, like, uh, I, I always forget when I'm actually going to listen to music. There's some stuff that I would recommend, some stuff I'm like... It was 20 years ago. Keep yeah. that in mind, yeah. Like the song Svita. Not one you really want to look at the lyrics to. Honestly, I would say if you want to enjoy them, just, like, none of it's super offensive, I should say. Mm. It's just, like, Svita was a song they wrote 20 years ago about a, a trans person. Oh. Uh... And this was at the height of their, like, a lot of what we write is funny. So, 20-year-old mm -hmm. trans comedy from cis men. Ooh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's fun if you listen to just the German and don't translate it, but... Yeah. Yeah. And... Like, a lot of their songs are just dirty in general, like, yeah. uh, Mind Tile is based on a true story. Uh, here's a phrase. Uh, Mind Tile. What do you think that translates to in English? Uh, I mean, mine does translate to mine, I know that. Or my, yeah. Right, and then Tile. I'll give you a hint, it's not, like, bathroom tile. Okay, yeah, that was gonna be my guess, considering how much of it is one-to-one. -one. I will give you another hint. The consonants stay the same. Mm. The vowels just change sound. Tile? No. Te it's my tool. Oh. Which, you know, means my dick in this context. Just full on song about your dick. Yeah, well... What do you know about uh, German cannibals? Not that much, actually. So... In Germany, a guy back in... I was in high school. Put out an ad on the internet for someone to consume... Oh, right! I remember consume. hearing about that. The guy now is a vegan. Mm. Or, or a vegetarian, huh? The, the taste he, turned him off of meat forever. Well, I'm maybe. But, uh... uh someone volunteered, and... So here's some questions I always have. How low is your, like, not only did someone volunteer, hundreds volunteered. Wow. Yeah. How low is your self-esteem that you're like, kill me and eat me? And how low is your self-esteem when you get rejected? <laughs> like, yeah. so, uh, the person shows up and it's like, you can kill and eat me, but first you gotta cut off my dick and the two of us eat it together. And they did. And what gets me about that story? There was enough to feed two. Hmm. Wait, so, challenge ten. Huh? Oh right. So the first part of this, the final thing. Hold on, I gotta go check it out. But the final thing I actually do need to do 
another puzzle and get another 15 jiggy, so I'll, I'll do that next time. But uh, I, I had forgotten that there's another bit. Rams Time wrote a song about that, and um, yeah, it's called Mind Tile. <laughs> so, like, they are very irreverent, and they're not a band I would necessarily go out of my way to defend all of their discography. Well, sure. But they're a fun band, and I, you get the feeling they definitely don't mean any ill content towards anyone. If they've, if they've made a joke that offended somebody, it would be the kind of thing that, yeah, they weren't able to actually eat the dick, though. I, oh. From what I read, they did. Hmm. But they couldn't cook it right. Well, there's not uh, exactly recipes for dick that like, you boil it, like, fucking... Ah, uh, there are recipes, but they probably were harder to find at the time. I'm sure now you could find good recipes for penis. I am not googling penis recipes, because I'm going to get the cum cookbooks again. Not again! <laughs> um, but, like, the fact that the guy was confident enough there was enough to feed to, like... That's a hell of a, like... Yeah, it's, it's more it's more impressive. of an hors d'oeuvre, you know? Just just a bite to, <laughs> to wet the palate. See, that's what they should have done. They should put it in a, a crock pot with some barbecue sauce and some other little smokies and smeared it with a toothpick. And then it's like, can you see which one it is? It blends in perfectly. Or as uh, 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 Rowan Atkinson called it in the movie Rat Race, cock doggies. <laughs> Have you seen that? I, it's been a long time since I've watched Rat Race. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Like, it's got some of the best comedians It's It's out effectively there. just live action Looney Tunes for it the majority really of it. It's it's funny. It's definitely dated. Like the fact that it ends with them crashing into an all uh, a Smash Mouth concert. Oh yeah. It's pretty yeah, emblematic. Like, the John Lovitz storyline. Ooh. With with the lady from uh, it's Hocus kind it's Pocus. it's almost something you'd expect to see on like Frasier with how like deep the comedy of errors with that whole line is. Yeah, and like it's slapstick Frasier. That's yeah. the best way. And like it's one of those jokes that I'm glad they made that storyline. Right. That would not fly today. Oh, most like, assuredly no. A Jewish family trying to, you know, win this race, stealing Hitler's car, burnt, like, and the comedy of errors involved ends up with him with a burnt tongue, unable to speak intelligibly, yeah. a bit of uh, dark lipstick on his upper lip to look like a Hitler stash. And his, his middle no. finger burnt, so yeah, he has to hold it aloft. And so he's crashed a World War II Veterans Memorial and gets out of the car with a swastika covered car going, and he's like flipping him off, like pointing at his middle finger, like very enthusiastically. Oh my god. And you're just like, what the fuck pulls a gun and just shoots at him? And they're like, ah! Yeah, it's it's very slapsticky. It's a little offensive, but it's offensive in a way where it yeah. they almost make it like make okay. sense. Well, Rowan Atkinson is he's the best part for sure. Like he's with what's his name? Something Knight. Oh, uh, uh, Wayne McKnight from Wayne McKnight, uh, who he's is mostly car. known as uh, Newman from Seinfeld. I always think of him as the guy from uh, Jurassic Park. Yeah, but uh, Seinfeld was popular enough, a lot of people would know him from that. Yeah, so uh, they're in an ambulance and Wayne looks over at Rowan and is like, you want to know, uh, like, he hits Rowan with his ambulance. Yep. And it's like, you want to, do you need a ride somewhere? He's like, yes, I'm trying to win a race. He's like, get in, but I gotta warn you, we're hauling ass. It's, uh, like, they cut a few other scenes and come back and... Wayne's like, you wanna know what I got back there? He like points to this like styrofoam cooler, all like, I don't know what that is. Uh, uh, and Rowan Atkinson delivers the best line in the whole fucking movie. You already told me! Ass! We're hauling ass! <sighs> it's so good. And with that, we are gonna end tonight's stream, but that's a that's a solid place to end it, so. Wayne Knight's name is way cooler than he is, is one over two. <laughs> 
that's true. That's very true. All right. So, yeah, thank you all for watching. Thank you to anybody who watched before. Thank you to anybody who watches in the future in the past broadcast tab on here or on the uh, archive channel, which you can find below the browser version here. You can also find my personal YouTube and my Twitter, where I'll tweet out wherever I'm going live. Ah! Uh, I'm doing it daily right now, but, you know, it'll change. I'm aiming for, like, somewhere between 9 to 10. Um, 9 to 10... 9 to 11, like, uh, Eastern Standard Time every day, but it's subject to change. Just look for the tweet. And... Hold on a goddamn second. Wait a minute. Hmm. I'm just now looking at your little scroll at the bottom here, and you named your YouTube channel Iggy and the Ape. And are you implying that I am an ape? Listen, we're all apes. We're all monkeys. I am a vanilla gorilla, thank you. All right, then. Good night, everybody.